Colossians chapter number three. Of all kinds of notes, I have a million thoughts. Could be dangerous. <laughs> Man, but I just want to uh, just want to share from God's word. I feel Sunday nights are different than Sunday mornings. That's no reflection of anybody who is or isn't here. I just think it's a different uh, a different setting, a different environment in general. Uh, for, for me as a pastor to be able to minister. And so uh, I want to look at some things that I believe will bring us growth tonight in our walk with Christ. So in Colossians chapter number 3, I'm going to start at verse number 1. The Word of God says, If then be risen, uh, if, if ye then be risen, with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our, our life, shall appear, then shall ye be also appear with him in glory. Mortify your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil consumptions, uh, covetousness, which is adultery, which things, uh, for which things sake, sake the wrath of God come up on the children of disobedient, disobedience, in that which ye also walk sometimes when you lived in them. But now you also put off these all these all of these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old uh, man with his deeds, and have put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision or uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is in the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts to that which also you are called in one body. And be ye thankful. Amen. There's a lot that I could say tonight, and uh, I'm trusting that the Lord will help us. But I want to look at I want to look at uh, what Paul was addressing to these Corinthians, and uh, he is he is writing, and we know that he is the author. Uh, if you read uh, here in, in Colossians, that's in Corinthians a moment ago. I'm sorry. If you read here in Colossians, Paul identifies himself as the writer. And uh, so he begins to write to them for three reasons. Number one is he writes to them because he's expressing his personal interest in them. Isn't it good when someone takes a spiritual, personal interest in you? Amen. It's good for you to take an interest in someone else and helping them in their Christian walk and in their maturity. But Paul showed a, a, an interest in this church of Colossae. Brother David, he said, don't be, don't, don't be spoiled. Don't be overtaken by vain philosophies. Beware. And so he takes an interest in them. And uh, he warns them uh, not to uh, 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 revert back to their pagan ways. Sister Rachel, he's concerned about them, that even in their religious status, and even in their relationship with God, that there will be some reverting back to some pagan ways. And then he teaches them against heresy. 
And so when Paul is doing this, he, he, he speaks to them a multitude of great things. And he talks about what this threefold cord is and sharing in Christ's uh, resurrection and, and his rapture and, and sharing in Christ's return. And we'll talk all about that in the next few moments as we look through the Word of God. But as Paul uh, begins to write, he, he tells them, if ye then be risen with Christ, Amen. Being risen with Christ. He talks to them about their position, a, a very important position. He talks to them about Christ being dead, Christ being crucified, but Christ being resurrected. And how explicit it is throughout the Word of God, Sister Dot, from the Old Testament all the way through the New Testament. The Old Testament giving shadows, but Sister Tina, the New Testament giving us the document, uh, documentary, uh, the documents of, of Him being crucified and risen. And how important it is, but not only that, but, but where we are positionally in Him. Isn't it good to know where our position needs to be in Him? So we, we know that Christ was crucified. We know that He is risen. And we know where He's sitting at today, at the right hand of the Father. We'll talk more about that in a few moments. Uh, but, but Paul was focusing on where they should be positioned in Christ. And that's my concern tonight. Are we positioned in Christ where Christ wants us to be and the Word of God challenges us and gives us knowledge of being? Positioned in Christ. And the Scripture, as, as we look throughout the Scripture, uh, we, we find that, that God wants us to be positioned in Him. He wants us to partake of, 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 of Christ. He's our food and our source of knowing the, of the will of God. Uh, when we look at Christ, amen, Christ wants us to be victorious. He's our salvation. He's our, our, our sanctification. He's our future glor glorification. So finding our position in Christ. I want us to look at the Word of God and find our position tonight. Good to have Devin Rich with us. I apologize. I should have said that earlier. The Bible says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. We make a proclamation to the world that we've been saved. That I've died with Christ. But not only have I died with Him, but Sister Tiffany, I'm resurrected with Him in newness of life. There's only one place where the day that salvation can come from, and that's Jesus Christ. And Paul gives us that constant reminder, if you be risen with Him, then seek those things which are above. Lift your eyes above this world and what they think may be salvation and security, and lift your eyes to Jesus Christ. The Bible says where Christ sits on the right hand of God. I want to tell you tonight that when He says on the right hand of God, there are many things that He's referring to. The first being that it is a finished work of Jesus Christ. He didn't go ahead halfway and do it. But Sister Susan, he went all the way. He died for you and I. He was buried in the work that he did as his body laid there in that, in that empty tomb. He was working for you and I. But then we find that he was resurrected in newness of life, but adjusted in a glorified body. He was here on this earth for 40 days, and they watched as he was ascended from them. But then when he was ascended, Brother Walt, the Bible says that he took a position at the right hand of God. Father, it is complete. I bridged the gap. I made a way of salvation. I gave my life's blood. And now I sit on the right hand of God ever making intercession. Amen. For the needs of mankind. It is a finished work. Amen. And if you and I this evening, if we are risen with Christ, we don't look for answers in this world to die. But we lift our eyes to Christ who has done the finished work and we know that whatever our need, whatever our burden, whatever our longing is, is found in Christ. Amen. Amen. Whatever you need tonight, it's found in Jesus. It's found in Christ. Lift your eyes above the things of this world. 
Amen. If you be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sits on the right hand of God. It's a position of authority and it's a position of power. We serve a God with all authority and all power to do great things in our lives. He went on down to say to set your affections on things above, not on the things of this earth. God help me to be ever mindful that this is temporary. God help me to lift my eyes to the eternal. Yes, enjoy life. Yes, engage. And when we come to the conclusion, we're going to see how that we can engage in life on every avenue of living. But as we live, we've got to lift our eyes to Jesus. You want them to say, for you are dead. You see, those old things are passed away. And because all things have become new, we are dead. Dead. You ever hear that old saying, don't beat a dead horse? You're going to be a dead good. But sometimes... If we're not careful, that old man that should be dead, we're working on reviving him when Christ wants us to live as a new creation. The Bible says that your life is hid with Christ in God. Thank God for the work of the cross. Hide me in the shadow of the cross. Hide me in the shadow of the cross. Let my life be hid, but may it be found in Christ who is in God. The Bible says, when Christ who is our life shall appear, amen, then shall you appear with Him in glory. Do you know what he's saying? He was saying this. He was saying there's a life of salvation, but I want you to know there's a life of sanctification. He's going to get on it in a few moments. But we live the life of salvation. We sanctify ourselves. It is definitely instantaneous. When God washes us, we are pure. We are white. But it is also a progressive walk that we grow in the grace and knowledge of our Savior, Jesus Christ. That we lift our eyes from the things of this world and we lift them to Christ. That we're found hid in Christ and not living in the old man. Amen. But we find ourselves in Him because one day He's coming back, Brother Dennis. And because we will live saved and we will live sanctified. Amen. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, amen. We're going to be glorified. Amen. This old body's not going to feel pain anymore. It's not going to have temptation. There's not going to be suffering. It's not going to be the former things. Amen. But Sister Susan, because we found ourselves hid in Christ, we've died with Him and we live with Him. Amen. We're going to eternally live with Him as our bodies are glorified. Praise God. What a great thought tonight. What a great promise. Amen. Amen. But he says this, Brother Eli. Amen. Yes, it's going to be a glorified body. Amen. But he says, put off, therefore, your members. Amen. That of the physical, which are upon the earth. And then he goes through this list. And he talks about the fornication and uncleanness. You know, he talks about sexual morality, anything that, that is taking place outside the realm that is holy and pure, that God's identified from the very beginning as marriage. He said, put off that. Then he talks about impurity, those things that per, uh, 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 contaminates a person's moral character uh, and, and gives them immoral behavior. He talks about passions, passions that are uncontrolled and lust. He talks about evil desires, you know, that, that scheming in the mind of, 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 of evil things that, 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 that a person wants to uh, a scheme and plan to participate in sin. And he talks about greed, uh, the intense desire for physical gratification and the longing for the things of this world. And, and a lot of that, it, it, it all came from idolatry. And so Paul warns against that, 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 that just evil uh, thinking and evil being. But when we look at these characteristics it's given in verse number 5, they all deal with an individual on a personal level. So Paul said you've got to get rid of those things. You've got to get rid of those things. 
loads of things that even as believers, we got to continually put off and put on Christ. He said, for which things sake the wrath of God comes down on the children of disobedience. There'll be payment for those things. Folks think they're getting by with it. But God says there'll be payment for that. He said, in which ye also walked sometime, you walked sometime when you lived in them. But he said, now put off these things. And then he begins to talk about these sins that are more on a public level that others can see. Anger, that emotional outburst, temper, temper tantrums, just being uh, just defiant. He talks about wrath, that one where the soul is enraged. You ever meet someone that their soul is just enraged? He talks about malice, wickedness that causes someone to act in an e evil way, slander, you know, speech that's against someone else that goes against the character that can destroy them. He talks about just abusive and foul speech, you know, filthy communications, things that come out of our mouth, words that are impure and unclean, things that bring the glory to God that are evil. And he says, and lie not one to another. It kind of puts this in a category by itself. You know, lying, whether it's that of getting personal gain, whether it's trying to get out of a situation, whether it's that of tearing down someone else to make yourself look better, whatever it is, he, he puts it in a category by itself. And, and he talks about uh, this, it's put on truth. And he says, and I have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him who created him. Hallelujah. This is where we're at tonight as believers. We put off the old, but it's putting on the new in the knowledge of him who created us. There's a lot of words that we can use for God. Lots of words, Brother David. But I do like to use this word, Creator. Amen. He is the originator of mankind. He formed, He made, He fashioned us after His very self. And He said, I want you to put off those old things which are not after me. And He said, I want you to put on the new man. Amen. Which is renewed in knowledge and after the image of Him who created you. Amen. Put on Christ. Amen. Put on those things that are pure. Put on those things that are holy. I want to ask you tonight, uh, on a very personal level, you don't need to answer me, but I'm challenging you. Have you been putting on the image of Him who created you? Amen. And those old things that Paul goes through and it goes down through the list of all those sins, whether they be personal sins or things that are made more public and are known. And, uh, uh, getting rid of them. Maybe we did those in times past, but it doesn't define us. It doesn't uh, speak of who we are today because the Word of God says, if you be risen with Christ, seek those things that are above. I've died with Christ and now I'm resurrected in newness of life and I'm putting off the old. But the responsibility is to put on the new. God to be like Him, to act like Him, to take on the characteristics of who, is, who He is. I want to be like God, not the old man, because I'm dead to Him. Yeah. But I'm alive in the newness of life. Amen. <clears throat> I'm challenged tonight. Challenged tonight. Put on Christ. Put on Christ. He said, when you put on Christ, 
He said there's not Greek nor Jew that are enemies. One thought the preaching of Christ was, what was a stumbling block. One thought it was uh, a foolishness. We've been talking about that on Tuesday evening. The Jew and Greek on two different sides of the spectrum. Uh, but Paul said, hey, there's not Jew or Greek in this. Amen. It's being Christ-like in this. And he went on down to say it's not about circumcision or, or non-circumcision. He went on down to say barbarian or, or a, a Scythian. Uh, they're, they're on two separate sides of the culture. I, I want to tell you what. Isn't it amazing when God's people come together, whether rich or poor, black or white, amen, uh, wherever we are, young or old, amen, there are no cultural barriers, amen, but Jesus Christ makes us one creation in Him and we all should be dressed, amen, Amen. We all should be robed in the very nature of Christ. Who we once were, we no longer are. Amen. But we are found in fashion in Jesus Christ because we are saturating our minds with the knowledge of Him. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then he goes on down to say, uh, 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 put, put on, therefore, the elect of God. He said, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy. I know that us in our culture, we think that's terrible. But, but move it up to the heart. It'll sound better. Amen. It's talking about the seat of affection uh, where we're merciful toward others. He said, kindness and humbleness of mind, meekness and, and long-suffering, all these fruits of the Spirit. He says, forbearing one another, forgiving one another. Uh, he said, if any man has a quarrel against you, even as Christ forgave you, forgive them. Let it go. I don't need to get back. I don't need to have the last word. Because I've gone Christ. And I've forgiven. <laughs> it's funny. My wife and I, we made a whirlwind trip to West Virginia for a wedding. I saw some folks I had not seen in years. Someone made a comment about something, and my wife and I were talking. I said, they remember me from way back in Bible school. I said, a lot of years ago. I ain't that same person. I hope I'm a little better. I, I, mean, I, I look different. <laughs> but I believe maturity-wise, we all grow. We're not who we used to be. We're who God wants us to be. He says, and above all things, put on charity, love, which is the bond of perfectness. Talk about complete growth, but when we truly have love for others, and we put on love in our life and we've grown ourselves in that such a bit, how awesome is that? You have a problem, you have a quarrel, but I love you and I forgive you. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. You know why? Because it is a sanctified peace. It has sanctified us and we are kept by peace. And he goes on down to say, to which you are called into one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. I don't want to put on the new man. It's the word of Christ that I'm putting on in my life. And that's how I wrote the new man. I find it in the word of God. And that's who I am. Do you remember as you were a child, you maybe dreamed of being something or doing something? It's not worth dreaming as an adult, but it's worth being practical and finding ourselves in God's word and being who Christ is wants us to be. Because at the end of our life, all that matters is how Christ-like for you and I. If any man be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. I'm closing. But let me say this. Whatsoever you do in word or deed, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God. And the Father by Him. Yeah. Now, how does all this affect our life? How does it work? I mean, we're talking about robing ourselves. We're talking about not being the old person. We're talking about being the new creation that's in Christ. Well, let me tell you how it affects us because Paul doesn't leave it go undetailed. All of you will fall into this category in some way. 
it'll affect your domestic life. Wives, listen. Sorry if you don't like to be called domesticated. I still think that that is the appropriate term. Whether you work outside of the home, but you're still a keeper of the home. Because Christ has called you for that. He says, wives, submit yourself unto your own husband as it is fit for the Lord. Listen, it is finding wives, your position in Christ allows you to find your position in being the wife that you should be. How do you be the perfect wife? Listen, don't worry about uh, all the uh, all the Pinterest pens and don't worry about all the, uh, the pioneer woman things and, and, and being the latest and the greatest. And the, God's not worried about that. God says the remedy for being the best wife is putting on Christ. Husbands, you're not out of the loop either. He says, husbands, love your wives and, and, and be not bitter against them. Amen. The idea of the husband is he loves his wife without bitterness. Listen, it's not a chore to provide for your wife or love your wife or, or to be that ear that's there for her, to be that emotional support, to be the man God's called you to be. I am being a husband. Uh, there should be no bitterness. There should be no frustration with that. Uh, but, but you love your wife. You know why? And you're the best husband in the world because you put on Christ. All the old things have gone away and now you've robed yourself in Christ and you're the A number one husband. Okay, kids. Young kids, adult kids. He doesn't leave you without either. He said, children, obey your parents in all things. That's talking about everything that they do. Believe just scripturally and, and do what's right. For this is pleasing unto the Lord. How do you do this? How do you do this? Even as a young person, as a child. Robe yourself in Christ. And then he talks to the fathers. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, uh, lest they be discouraged. How do you be a good father? How do you be a good mother? Because we've engulfed our minds in the knowledge of God's Word. And we put off. But by choice, and because we're doing it with thinking and thought, we're robing ourselves in Jesus Christ so that we can be the best parents in the world. I still have a lot of questions about how do I do it, how do I do it right? But I believe that the greatest thing about Josh is when I robe myself in Christ. I can't mess it up, Sister. And then he talks to those who are servants. And then he talks to those who are masters. He doesn't leave anyone without freedom. But he wants us to be found in the newness of life. Several years ago, Sister Beth, if you come to the piano, Listen, I know I've not preached the Holy Ghost shot and message tonight, but I promise you I've preached a good Holy Ghost message that will make you shout and make me shout if I do not You remember me saying, I pray for God to bring, build strong families in this church. I believe God is. I believe God is. But the way we continue to be strong in our community, strong in our families, strong in the positions of life God has called us to, is when we look to Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of our faith. Knowing that He's finished the work by the day, but He just didn't start it. But Sister God, He finished it. And now He sits at the right hand of God. So how do I clothe myself for all the hats that I wear in life and my positions? It's not your responsibility to find a different attire for each one of them. The only attire that you need to worry about is putting off the old man. Paul was concerned about this church of Colossians because 
He didn't want them falling back into pagan traditions. He took a real interest in them to let them know how they could succeed in eternal things. It starts right here. Listen, I'm not planning on dying tomorrow. I hope God gives me lots of time ahead in my life. And so I want to be successful in everything that I do. The only way to measure success is robing myself in Christ. When I die with Him, but I live with Him. That means that I'm saved and now I am sanctified. We don't like to hear that word in the church world. Most of the church world don't even preach a message of sanctification anymore because it infringes too much on the lifestyle that folks live. Listen, God wants to get involved in your lifestyle. Amen.